Hello and welcome to Different Leaf. I'm Britt Smith, ready for the end of election season, and according to marijuana sales patterns, so are the rest of you. This episode, we're talking about how cannabis consumption rates have changed during the pandemic and how different age groups are using weed in different ways. Unsurprisingly, legal marijuana sales have been going way up all over the map ever since May. A couple of states have been reporting month after month after month of record-breaking sales numbers, rec and medical, including Illinois, Oregon, Colorado, and Washington state. In Illinois, which is surrounded by states where weed is not legally sold to adults, There has been an influx of -of out-of-state customers looking for a natural way to take the edge off. And here in Massachusetts, most legal rec shops are still limiting how much flour customers can buy, and it's been that way for around seven months. Testing labs here are backed up by at least a month, so you better believe that there are days when our local pot shops are still selling out of bud. While people of all ages, genders, colors, shapes, and sizes are definitely buying more legal weed than ever before, It appears to be for different reasons, depending on your generation. To learn more, I'm talking to Dr. Marion McNabb from the Cannabis Center of Excellence. Dr. McNabb has partnered with the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth to do an anonymous research study on how COVID is impacting medical and adult use marijuana consumers. We see that cannabis is, you know, a very social drug. Um, And I think that's really, really hard now in COVID because uh, we can't gather like that. And when we do gather, we really shouldn't be sharing our joints. So now we have to socialize with our own joints (laughs) in the same (laughs) circle, but not pass them. Um, Right. This is the time you cannot pass it to the left, unfortunately. Um, You know, people sort of got a little lax at the end of summer. We were like, all right, we can join bubbles. You know, I remember getting together with friends and just like, it was such a, a connecting thing for us all to be enjoying the same thing together. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've seen some new innovations pop up, like uh, little joint condoms, so to speak, um, <laughs> where you have your own mouthpiece and then you can share the actual joint with everybody has their own mouthpiece. Yeah, that's a great invention. So, so we're all at home consuming more and more weed and some of us, you know, it's our first time. I guess this is why we need to be more educated about cannabis during COVID. What do you What do you think we need to know? In a variety of areas, I think we need to educate the public. One, that cannabis, you know, is less harmful than some other substances like alcohol, for example, or opioids, right? And so cannabis in a time of anxiety and COVID and when we want connections and we miss our friends, um, you know, cannabis is an option that is non-lethal and less toxic. I'm actually running a cannabis and COVID-19 study right now, um, asking cannabis consumers and patients how COVID has impacted their use. Mm -hmm. Um, And interestingly, anxiety is the top reason that people are consuming. And in our survey responses so far, over over 50% have reported that they're consuming more cannabis now. Wow. And they're consuming more cannabis, but they're also reducing the consumption of alcohol or the use of prescription or over-the-counter medications or even tobacco. Um, So, you know, Mm -hmm. really thinking about not only the social aspects of us all coming together and becoming friends and sharing stories, um, but that this is a a substance that is helpful in relieving some of these anxieties and depressions, whereas alcohol, for example, has been shown in some studies to cause anxiety and depression. And cannabis can also, you know, it's not for everybody. Certain strains can cause anxiety. My use has definitely increased during the pandemic. And, you know, now that we're like less than a week from the election, I cannot roll those babies fast enough. Um, I actually spoke to a friend of mine yesterday and she quite rightfully said that, you know, when we were kids, when we were teenagers, we were smoking to chill out and, you know, but it was nothing like the stuff that we can buy now in stores. They've got this incredible range of THC. The THC level can be so much higher, but it doesn't necessarily have to have more THC. In fact, for some people, you know, being alone and super high, that would actually worsen things. 
I agree with you. There are stronger strains, but there's also a lot more diversity now. Mm. Um, and you know what you're getting and it's legally tested. I mean, if you're getting it through the legal market, obviously. And now we can understand that there's, you know, THC, CBD, uh, CBG, C, you know, CBN, all these other different cannabinoids and terpenes and these combinations that impact particular conditions differently. Mm. Um, I think one thing that the general public may not know and, and younger populations is what does all that mean? Right. You know, like what does CBC do? What does CBN do? Why should I buy a CBD dominant strain? Um, and I think that's where we have the opportunity to educate the consumer the patient and the general public about yeah, there are stronger strains, but there are strains that are tailored for particular conditions, specifically, you know, um, mm-hmm. that geared towards calming you down or won't be too strong, but, you know, strong enough to achieve the desired effect. So I want to talk more about your study with the Cannabis Center of Excellence um, with UMass, and it's about cannabis consumption during the pandemic. And I, I kind of want to know how millennials and younger generations are changing their intake versus the older population. Did you split the results by age? So actually, yeah, the study is ongoing and we did do a preliminary analysis of age, but we looked at people below the age of 42 years and above the age of 42 years. And we had roughly around the same sample size and very interesting differences in uh, age groups. So younger people, way more likely to experience anxiety and depression and to be consuming cannabis for that. Older people, less likely to consume cannabis for anxiety and depression in the pandemic, more likely for chronic pain. Young people were more likely to report having a you know, serious stressful event in their life. So having to move, having to take care of a parent, having to homeschool their children. And that sort of led to feeding, feeding a little bit of the anxiety. The uh, younger people were also more likely to uh, reduce the use of medications using cannabis uh, in this study. Is that like prescriptions and over-the-counter? Yeah, prescriptions and over-the-counter medication. And I think that's probably, you know, we, we and our team, you know, tossed around about that. Like, why would younger people we'd be more likely to be reducing the use of over-the-counter prescription medications than older people. Older people likely have a lot more medications that they're dealing with um, that have um, additional symptoms. But as we, as we looked into the data, and as I mentioned, you know, younger people are far more likely to use cannabis to treat anxiety, 74% versus 60. And this is, again, the age range is 42 years. Mm. So lots of people are prescribed anxiety medications, right? And so if more of these younger people are using cannabis to treat anxiety, then they're less likely to be trying to use their anti-anxiety meds potentially. Mm. And then additionally, the younger people said that they were more likely to use cannabis to treat headaches and nausea, appetite and weight symptoms, and attention and concentration symptoms compared to older people. And that they're more likely to report that cannabis helps uh, their psychological symptoms. And younger people are more likely to reduce the use of alcohol and reduce starting other medications and reduce tobacco. Slightly more younger people have reported a positive diagnosis of COVID. Um, slightly more younger people have reported that they might have had COVID, but they didn't have access to a test. So maybe that's because they had to work. Maybe that's because they didn't have a test available in their area. Mm -hmm. Um, And note that this data was collected at the beginning of the pandemic. So, you know, again, testing has become more widespread and changed. So, you know, I think also older people are were at risk, so they would be more likely to be one of the first in the queue at the beginning to get a test. So that's going to be one of the reasons. With, with the trends of what happened, we also asked during COVID, did you lose your job? Did you have to get on unemployment? And younger people were more likely to report that they had to lose their job, become a, on a, unemployment. And then reported that they now are more likely to have to purchase cannabis on the unregulated market. So 17% versus seven. Is this study inside Massachusetts only or is it outside? 
it's national, but the majority of our respondents were from Massachusetts. And that they reported, 15% reported that they couldn't access legal cannabis from the regulated market anymore. That's due to the adult use shutdown by Baker Mm -hmm. um, as the only state. And that um, that they were forced uh, to purchase more cannabis on the unregulated market. Why not from legal stores? Probably because it was very expensive. One, I mean, adult use was shut down. And then we saw an uptick of medical cards, right? Right. Um, And you said some people getting registered for that. But if somebody couldn't do that route or get the medical card or it's, you know, too difficult, then, you know, obviously you're forced to purchase on the unregulated market. Yeah, I swear the shutdown of rec stores here actually really screwed a lot of, you know, legal businesses and consumers. Uh, We couldn't afford to renew my husband's medical card at the time that the rec stores all got shut down at the beginning at the beginning of the pandemic. And the recreational stuff was so limited when it did open back up. Actually, it still is. You know, they're down to the dregs of the flower there. So luckily, we started growing our own to subsidize what we could, you know. Absolutely. And that's that's really interesting because we do ask how many people started to grow their own cannabis since the pandemic started. And people did report doing so. And I think that's the benefit of living in Massachusetts, that you legally can. I went and trimmed somebody's home grow on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. And it's, I think, also a very therapeutic thing to do during COVID. You oh, know, yeah. you're at home all the time, you can care for plants. Um, you know, it's really, I think, uh, can be very, very therapeutic and anxiety relieving. Yeah. How's your first harvest turn out? Oh, it was good. <laughs> yeah. I took a little tea break right before it, let my tolerance settle down so I could really feel it because I really wanted to know how I did. And it was really peaceful. Um, I had uh, three different strains and the the dosi dough was really, really cool, really chill. And I felt like a body wave. It was really beautiful. Um, I think that my ACDC just sort of did its own thing. That's a heavy CBD plant and it just was so difficult like anytime I overwatered it or I clipped it it just wilted so I was like whatever you do you and but actually (laughs) when I smoked it it was really nice um I I don't know how it does as well as you know as far as CBD goes I'm not much of a CBD smoker but it was nice my husband really appreciated it. it was very good for his PTSD um and then the other one I had was tropical punch um, ooh, and that one was fruity. It, it got me cleaning. It was really stimulating. I'm really, yeah. I, I'm hoping to get some new, um, and start from seeds next time because this time I got, um, clippings from a friend, but I want to start them from seed and I really want to get some lamb's bread. That is my absolute favorite. And I haven't had it since I was on the West coast. Oh, wow. Do you know that's Bob Marley's favorite strain? Oh, I didn't know that, but that's yeah. really, that's good taste. That's such a yeah. good, such yeah, a good strain. Yeah, there's a colleague in, uh, at UMass Dartmouth that grows lamb's bread and told me that story that it was Bob's favorite strain. Oh, my gosh. I have to meet yeah. this person and get some weed from them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll look at <laughs> Look at he's trying to enter the legal market. Oh, yeah. Good. Look at you. So, he's a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. If you want to take part in Dr. McNabb's ongoing research on cannabis during COVID, you can go to org and take part in the anonymous research survey with UMass Dartmouth. And now for your latest U.S. cannabis news. Last minute legal challenges are coming in against some states' cannabis-related ballot measures that are set to be voted on on November 3rd. But they don't seem to be sticking. In Mississippi, the state Supreme Court said it would not hear a challenge to the medical marijuana legalization ballot question until after the election. Legalization opponents in Arizona have released some seriously misleading attack ads this week. They say if weed is legalized, high school suspension rates will increase, stoned driving will become a problem, and a litany of other claims that have been routinely proven false by data from other legal states. A new poll in Montana shows the Adult Use Legalization Initiative has increased to 54% approval with 38% disapproval. 
And in New Jersey, if voters approve public question one, the cultivation, processing and sale of retail marijuana would be legalized in the Garden State. And the state Senate Judiciary Committee chairman said that if it passes, he wants people to be able to buy legal weed immediately. So New Jersey, you could have legal recreational sales by the end of November. In Massachusetts, the Cannabis Control Commission's planned meeting to discuss more about delivery services has been postponed until November 30th. The pause happened after nine. 